In this video I'm going to show how to make a device that uses electromagnetic induction to launch a metal object up to 60 feet high. When an object is exposed to a magnetic field that changes over time, a voltage develops across it, even if it's not touching anything. The stronger the magnetic field and or the faster it's changing, the larger the voltage developed across the object will be. If that object is a good conductor, like copper or aluminum, that induced voltage can cause significant current and that current flow in turn creates another magnetic field, just like when you hook up a coil of wire to a battery. Now unlike with ferromagnetism, the magnetic field from induced currents will want to push away from the source of induction, so I'm going to take advantage of that fact to launch a projectile through repulsion. So let's look at the schematic of how I'm going to do that. Power comes from a 12 volt lithium battery. When the button is held down, the oscillator circuit that drives the high voltage transformer is energized. This type of oscillator is called a ZVS, or Zero Voltage Switching Driver, which uses two MOSFETs to oscillate an inductive load at resonance, so it's pretty efficient. Because this circuit is so widely used, I was able to buy one cheaper than I could build it, but I'm still showing the schematic here in case you want to build your own. Next, the 1200 volt output comes out of the transformer secondary as high frequency alternating current. So it's passed through a bridge rectifier to turn it into direct current and charges the capacitor bank from there. The diode here is a flyback diode and this resistor network is a 3 to 1 voltage divider. This allows me to measure 1200 volts on my cheap multimeter that only goes up to 500. So when the caps are charged to the full 1200 volts, the meter will show 400. Once the caps are charged, they're triggered by energizing the spark gap. I originally intended to have this be an electrically triggered spark gap, but my cheap Chinese spark generator fizzled out, so I just trigger it by hand with a bolt on the end of a PVC tube. To get the voltage I wanted, I 3D printed a bobbin and wound my own secondary coil to put on the flyback transformer. The primary of the transformer is center tapped, so the high side alternates between the left and right winding, and the middle winding goes to ground. Now I'm going to test out the flyback transformer with the ZVS driver being powered by a 12 volt lithium battery. I don't have a voltmeter connected for this test, but I can tell by the arc length there's definitely at least 1200 volts. Next I assemble the capacitor bank, which consists of three capacitors rated at 400 volts in series, giving me a total rating of 1200 volts. Here's the bridge rectifier. And here's the resistor divider that allows me to measure the bank voltage. When my meter reads 400 volts, that means I'm actually at 1200 volts. To charge the caps, I hold down the red button to turn on the ZVS driver, and the voltage starts to build up. At 400 volts on the meter, the caps are actually at 1200 volts, and the launcher is ready to fire. The launcher coil is working pretty good, but I think I can do better. 
I'm going to slice open a microwave transformer, effectively converting it from a power transformer into an electromagnet with a super effective core. This should make it much more efficient than just a simple coil of wire. Here's a demonstration of it on a 12 volt battery. It's extremely effective as a magnet. In fact, this thing is so powerful, it probably deserves a video of its own in the future. With some water cooling and higher voltage, I think it could do some really insane things. And right off the bat, I can tell that ring got way more airtime. But a solid ring of metal isn't actually the only thing this works on. If I short circuit my original coil, it should produce the same effect. Now let's try the reverse arrangement and see if the transformer can launch itself off this quarter inch aluminum plate. Well, that's not so great. Let's launch the plate instead. The last thing I want to try is launching the original coil off the aluminum plate. Looks like the voltage jumped the insulation and short-circuited through the aluminum plate. It left one hell of a mark too. For a short time, the current in the circuit is well over a thousand amps. Let's try that again with a sheet of polyethylene to insulate the plate. So there you have it, electromagnetic induction.